Uh, we live in an age, in the golden age of geospatial technology, and uh, the world is soon going to be geocoded everywhere, and it is even possible to purchase uh, commercially available satellite images or even get these images freely on the web. And so this is kind of like when the printing press was produced. Now we live in an era uh, when uh, you can actually do your own geospatial research. Now my interest these days is in market research in the developing world. And I am looking at ways of leveraging satellite and geospatial technologies to improve market research in places like India, Africa, China, and indeed all over the globe. So this is a picture using one of these software tools of Nairobi, uh, where I just visited. And uh, I've overlaid on Google Earth uh, some of uh, these higher resolution images uh, in the middle there, and those are provided by our partner uh, Digital Globe, uh, one of these commercial suppliers of uh, satellite imagery. Um, but in looking at Nairobi from the air, I realized I was making the ultimate ivory tower mistake, uh, but from hundreds of miles in the air this time. So I took a trip to Nairobi and Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to really get a feeling for what happens on the ground, how these data are collected. So um, I'll just quickly go there. Um, so what I found is that uh, there are the types of markets that you might expect, everything from high-end uh, retail establishments in that upper right corner to tabletop markets where people are distributing cigarettes and other types of uh, commercial products, uh, and you see everything in between. Uh, homes where the um, products are sold in the front of the home and people live in the back. And uh, so I realized that there's a very uh, complex and diverse uh, economy there. Um, so people always ask me, why Africa? And of course, we want to do the entire globe, uh, but uh, Africa is a great place to start. So the graphic on the far left there shows that the United States, China, India, Western Europe, and Eastern Europe can all fit on the African continent. It gives you an idea of the massive space uh, that we're trying to cover. And uh, we're looking at one little dot in Nairobi, albeit a big city, uh, but there are going to be one billion people living in cities uh, in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa soon. So there's no way that we can send people out to stores to count products on shelves in this way. And that's why we want to leverage satellite imaging for that. Uh, also, you can see that the middle class of Africa is already at 500 million, and that surprises a lot of people, but it's very much a middle class evolving in Africa and uh, the other big news about Africa is that uh, mobile phones are widely used. And just since 2000, they've signed up 316 million uh, cell phone subscribers, which is bigger than the whole population of the US. So it shows you that uh, people are really using these cell phones. And in fact, this is the first internet experience that many people in Africa have, is directly through their cell phone. So how does this work? How can you extract features from satellite images? Uh, this is a new area for me. I think Brandon told you that I uh, used to train rats to do uh, and record from the rat brain. I used to do that type of work. But one common theme is pattern recognition and feature extraction. So what we want to do is look for features in the images that can indicate uh, something about what we're trying to measure. So we're interested in the wealth uh, of the different neighborhoods uh, where stores might be located and where people might make purchases. So one thing I noticed uh, quite consistently is the red tile roof and the swimming pool is a very strong indicator of wealth. And you can see from this image in Nairobi, uh, a wealthy neighborhood. You can even see a tennis court or two in there. And you can see by using just automated image procedures that we can extract uh, the swimming pools. So you can see these little red dots and uh, we can extract the rooftops. So those are the kinds of examples of features, uh, road networks, um, power grid information, all this type of information can be fed into a machine learning algorithm so that you can use that machine to predict other neighborhoods by just feeding them the information. And that's how we hope to scale this 
uh, to wider and wider areas. Now, not every area is the same, and you should never lump the countries together because they're all quite different. When I went to Addis Ababa, I discovered that the rich and the poor live you know, in the same neighborhoods, essentially, although the rich still have red tile roofs and swimming pools. Uh, but it's much more um, mixed in uh, contrast to Nairobi, where you have neighborhoods, rich and poor neighborhoods. So, so there are differences. Uh, you can't make a one-size-fits-all. But you can see some of the features that one would use. Uh, these are just more uh, close-ups uh, of Nairobi. You can see that um, even at this magnification, you can see cars, you can see the width of the streets and the highways. Uh, you can pick a lot of features out. And we're just looking at tiny little chunks of space. So here's the idea that you train. We have all this information geocoded in Nairobi, um, every store pretty much, uh, volumes, all this other information. We have the income levels, family structures in some of these neighborhoods. So you can overlay these on the satellite images and you can train a machine learning algorithm to start to recognize automatically and draw these boundaries, store density, income levels, et cetera, on an automated basis. So in doing that, though, we still need to validate uh, what those uh, estimates are. So we, need to, we can't send people everywhere to count stores. It's impossible. It doesn't scale up. But we were looking for ways to efficiently, um, uh, efficiently sample these uh, stores and verify our measurements with the satellite. And we think we hit on something using behavioral biomimicry. So fancy term, I suppose. But biomimicry, the classic example, is Velcro. Uh, the original uh, scientist who discovered Velcro or invented it, engineer, uh, he was curious about why burrs stick to his dog's fur and his socks so effectively, and so he took one and stuck it under the microscope and discovered that it has little tendrils that uh, make very good sticky uh, substance. So he, that is the origin of uh, Velcro. So. That's, biomimicry is borrowing from nature and in making an inspired, naturally inspired design in the engineering world. So my interest uh, as someone who studied navigation in animals and, uh, and how the brain conducts navigation, I became immediately interested in doing something similar to what animals do when they're looking for food. So the idea of looking for stores is very analogous to looking for food stores. And I started to study uh, um, the literature, and I discovered that there is an area called optimal foraging, which is a very interesting predictive model uh, of how animals decide to make uh, food chasing decisions, for example, when to leave one patch and go to the other. And so it's something that's been honed over many, many uh, millions of years. And uh, so we are adopting this type of strategy uh, in building our system. So one of the first things you do is make the structure function, which tells you how, in probabilistic terms, food stores are uh, distributed around the environment. And you can see that if you are, uh, this top chart shows that if you are at a store, uh, of course, you have 100% likelihood of finding the store where you are, but over space, um, you have a lower uh, probability. And uh, so we are trying to build these types of structure functions for stores. So here is um, all the petro stations in Nairobi. And that was the first one we used to try to build a structure function that describes the environment in relationship to the location of stores. We're not exclusively interested in petrol stations. But um, so what can we do with that? We built one, and this tells you that uh, for gas stations, that uh, you are 95% likely to find a gas station within one kilometer if you're placed anywhere on this map. And so that can help you kind of forage, if you will, for gas stations. Our interest is to map uh, thousands of store types and look at these relationships there and design optimal ways to sample based on our satellite imagery. So thank you very much.